everybody, this is Bradley from Analysis Pro. Thank you very much for watching. This is episode three, season two of the Talk to Brad videos, where today we do get technical and discuss the live streaming options, including streaming to mobile devices and the amazing Naxport Coach Station. Today we are joined by Josh Bryan, performance analysis maestro himself. So first of all, to start the stream for the Naxport real-time streaming solution or Coach Station, before starting either of these processes in Naxport, the most important part of the setup is to get your main Naxport capture machine onto a network that will also be accessed by your receiver devices. This network needs to be stable and when using your own router or AP wireless solution, we strongly recommend having your main capture machine connected to the router via an ethernet cable. For an even more solid connection, you should set a static IP range for your router as we do when setting you up with AP wireless. For best practice and when using an Ethernet connection to your router, you should turn off the wireless on your computer before you start your live capture and streaming process. If you need the wireless connection for internet from a separate network, for example, turn this back on and connect after you have started your capture and streaming. For your receiver devices, connect to the same network as the router. The strongest connection is again via Ethernet cable, if you're next to the main machine, for example. If your review devices are further away, you should connect them via the wireless connection to the router or if using AP Wireless to the AP Wireless boosted network. We will firstly look at the real-time streaming process, which is available from Natsport Basic Plus for sharing a live dashboard, with Sculpt Plus also sharing registered clips live, then Pro Plus and Elite also enabling you to share drawings over your live video out to wireless devices too. Start your capture in Naxport. Once running, there are two ways to start your real-time streaming process. If you were going to be streaming a live dashboard, the best way is to first open your dashboard, then at the top of the dashboard window, you will see the antenna symbol, which is your real-time streaming tool. Press this, then select yes in the pop-up window. This window just removes any old content from the data stream, so your receivers will only see the data from this new capture. Your dashboard will now start streaming, along with the registered clips and drawings if you're on a version that can use those. When the process is running, you will see a small black window called Web Server appear on your screen. This displays the IP address at the bottom of the window, which is what your receiver devices need to type into their web browser to open the stream. You have some settings that you can change for the stream, like how often the live dashboard is refreshed for the receiver device, and the interval you want for dashboard history which lets you see the dashboard results from the previous five minute intervals, for example. You can also determine more specifics for the stream, run some automated processes and choose how often the receiver device will refresh the content it gets. If you started the streaming process with two networks like Ethernet connection and wireless, you will see a message in red text saying various IPs. Click this and you will see your two network adapters usually the Ethernet and the wireless. Choose the one that you are connected to your network with. As mentioned at the start, we recommend an Ethernet connection to your router and turning off your Wi-Fi if you don't need it. If your receiver devices are connected to the same network, all they need to do is open a web browser, then type in the IP address that is shown in the web server window we just mentioned. Depending on the version of your main capture machine send in the stream, the receiver will then be able to switch between viewing the live dashboard, a history of previous dashboards, the play-by-play -play window that enables them to download clips to view, their device playlist and in-game drawings. In your template settings, you can determine whether you want category clips to be added to the web server play-by-play -play or not. You find this option in the behavior setting for each category button. By default, it is turned on so everything streams. For the receivers, their play-by-play -play list of clips will keep updating as you register new clips. They will just need to choose to download a clip. Then your capture machine will create this clip and stream it out. Once it's ready, it will show a play icon. If you have multiple receiver devices on the same network, they will all be able to play clips as soon as one device requests it. The start button lets receivers add clips into their own device playlist so they can keep going back to their favorite clips whilst connected to the stream. 
Yellow stars show that a clip is added to the playlist on the receiver's own device and blue stars show that the clip has been added to a playlist on a different receiver's device. If using Maxport Elite in the main web server settings on the machine, there was a tick box option to make presentation with the remote lists. This means that if your receivers are playlisting clips on their devices, when you stop the capture on the main machine and go to the timeline, you will be able to open a presentation window that was automatically created in the real time pres folder. This will contain lists for the different receiver devices and show the clips they played during the live capture and stream. A great process for speeding up your feedback after the capture as you can show the receivers the moments they highlighted during the live event. If using Maxport Pro Plus and Elite, you have the option to send in-game drawings. When watching back a registered clip or scrubbing back to a previous moment in the video, you can open the drawing tool, add your drawings over the still frame, then press the option to send to in-game drawings. Receiver devices will then be able to see these drawings with the most recent always at the top. Now, let's look at sending out video and data to a coach station machine from either your Pro Plus or Elite license. Your network setup protocol is the same as before, so we recommend an ethernet connection to your router from the main capture machine, ensuring that you turn off your Wi-Fi before you start the capture. When you go to start a capture in Pro Plus or Elite, you will see some tick boxes in the performance settings that you need to set. Full capture mode enables you to scrub back through the live video. Stream video signal needs to be on for you to be able to stream the live video to your coach station machines. In Elite, you also see Send Data to Coach Stations, which needs to be turned on if you want the Coach Station to be able to use a live play-by-play -play table, matrix and interactive dashboard. With everything set up, you are now ready to start your capture. Once the capture is running, you will see an important message at the top of your capture window. This is the address that you are streaming out the video and data on which begins with MMS colon forward slash forward slash. On your Coke Station machine, ensure you are connected to the same network as mentioned before. Then open next spot, press tools, then Coke Station from the main menu. Here you have a gray box to type in the streaming address. You need to type in the full address shown in the capture window on the main machine. So make sure to start with MMS. For example, MMS colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.10 colon 8091. You can press test video stream to check if the feed is coming through. Then when you are ready, press start capture. The coach station will have access to the video and data from the moment you press start capture. So make sure you start the capture on the main machine, then this capture on your coach station before the event starts, as you can only review what has been received from that point onwards. After 20 seconds of running, the coach station device will be able to press the delayed feed button to open a second video window. The live window will go small and then you can use the delay window to scrub back through the video with all the usual Naxport playback controls. Once the playhead on your delay window gets towards the end, it will automatically refresh to bring in more video from the live stream. This delay window will always be behind time. So if you notice that it is not refreshing when it is at the end, it is just because the new video isn't available yet. Typically, you will be about 15 to 20 seconds behind the live feed you see in the small window. You can press the small button along the bottom to manually refresh the delay window, or press the plus key to force this refresh too. If the main capture machine is Naxport Elite and streaming the data, the coach station can choose to open the play-by-play -play window, matrix and dashboard too. With your delayed video window open, when you press the play icon on the registers in the play-by-play -play window, the video will jump to that moment. You can filter this window by specific categories to help with review. For example, only seeing coach clips that are registered. If using a dashboard on the coach station, you need to ensure that it has been created alongside the template being used on the main capture machine, so it can display the data it is receiving. 
You will have likely created the dashboard on the main capture machine with your template, so you just need to export the dashboard, then import it into the dashboard menu on the Naxport machine that is running CoachStation. During the event, clicking on dashboard results in CoachStation will make the corresponding moment from the video pop up, so this is a really interactive way to bring stats to life for live review. As mentioned at the very start, the most important part of this process is getting your network set up right to begin with. Try to have an Ethernet connection from your main capture machine to your router and have your Wi-Fi turned off. Then connect your receiver or coach station devices to the router via Ethernet if close enough, or connect via Wi-Fi to the router or AP wireless booster network. Once everything is set and ready to go, you can make the most out of using live streaming and review processes available with Naxport. So that's it from Josh and I this week. That concludes episode three, season two of the Talk to Brad videos. Hope that gave you a lot of technical knowledge there in order to utilize the live streaming tool within Naxport and also our coach station. See you again for episode four. Thanks for watching.